Today, we're going in depth on the Dunner Morph. What's up, YouTube? So I've actually made videos in the past on Bearded Dragon Morphs, but I've been asked to do individual videos for each morph. That way I can talk in depth on each morph. Um, I'm not sure how well this video, these videos are going to do, but I want to put them out there anyways because it's information that people want to know. I might as well put it out there. So the first one we're going to talk about today is the Dunner Morph. So I'm going to show you some normal scales. I'm going to show you some Dunners. And then I'm going to show you some Dunners with leather back on them. So you can kind of get an idea of what they look like um, and also determine if you have yourself a Dunner Morph or a regular or whatever it is that you may have. So I'm going to be doing a video per morph. So I'm going to do one on Dunner, which is today, one on Leatherback, one on Hypo, one on Translucent, one on Wiblets, one on Zero. And then last one I want to do is on Genetic Stripe because it's a newer morph. And I want to talk more about what it is, a gene what, what a Genetic Stripe actually is, uh, what a Thunderbolt actually is, and all of that. So let's go ahead and get into the Dunner morph. And let me show you a few dragons that I think are pretty cool. They might teach you something about that morph. So first I want to show off a normal scale and I'm going to show you a couple of normal scales so you can kind of get an idea of what different normal scales look like just to start off the basis. Um, so the first normal scale is going to be just a regular normal scale. She's not actually regular. She has a little bit of color, but she is a regular normal scale. So this is Sarah. Sarah is a red hypo normal scale. And you can see that normal scale doesn't really look any different than a regular bearded dragon. This is what most people are used to seeing. Uh, so this girl here is regular scale, and I kind of want to zoom in and show you what the scales look like. These scales have no, they're, there's barely any spike when you go down this way. So when you go downwards, you can feel a little bit of smoothness, I guess you could say, versus when you go upwards, there's a lot of resistance because all of the scales on a normal bearded dragon, she don't want to be uh, in the video today. So all of the scales on a normal bearded dragon all go towards the tail. So they go from the neck towards the tail. So they all go downwards. So when you go upwards on the scales, you feel a lot of resistance versus if you go downwards, it's kind of a little bit smooth. Not like a leatherback smooth, but it's smooth enough where you can tell that there's a difference between going upwards towards the scales and downwards uh, towards the tail. So this is a normal uh, scale bearded dragon. That's the basis of a, the normal scale scale bearded dragon let me see if i can show you a bit of what they look like so you can kind of see how they all go in one direction downward so there you go so this is apollo and apollo is a hypotrans dunner and as you can see the scales don't look much different from this view but you can see a little bit of rounded pattern on the sides here so all of this pattern is what comes from a Dunner Morph. And I'll show you one that is a leatherback so you can kind of see the pattern a little bit better. Um, but this Dunner Morph, besides the pattern, it also creates a lot of spikiness on the dragon. So there's extra spikes on the sides, extra spikiness on the top of the head here. And this, the tail is actually a little bit spikier too. Dunners tend to have shorter tails than regular scale better dragons. I'm not sure really what the reason behind that is. But I have noticed that a lot of my Dunners end up with shorter tails than a regular bearded dragon. They all end up being just about the same length anyways. It's just that their tails usually are a little bit shorter. Uh, you can kind of see that they're shorter just because you can have, if you have multiple bearded dragons, you'll notice that. Um, besides the rounded pattern and the scales being straight up and scalier, what you also see is that you'll have resistance from going downwards on the back and also going upwards on the back, there will be a lot of resistance, about the same amount of resistance because the scales stick straight up. So just like I showed you with the normal scale, I'm gonna show you with the Dunner. So unlike the normal scale where the scales went downwards towards the tail, you can kind of see the scales on the top sticking a little bit more straight up than a normal scale did. So it's hard to see because the camera doesn't like to focus on small scales like that, but they're there. You can get a gist of what you're looking at. You'll notice just by feeling it because it'll be rough in both directions versus a normal scale is only rough when you go up it. Dunners are going to be rough in both directions. So now let me show you a leatherback so you can get an idea of what a leatherback looks like. So you can see the pattern of a dunner versus a regular dunner it doesn't have the same amount of pattern. Um, it has a pattern, but you can't see it as well because of all the scaliness. So I'll show you a leatherback so you can get an idea of what a pattern looks like on a dunner. 
nobody wants to sit for a video today, so it's becoming a little bit harder to record this than I thought it would be. So with this Hypo Trans Leatherback Dunner here, you can see some of the pattern that I was showing you with the normal scale. You have all of this rounded pattern on the sides, and that is what the Dunner Morph creates as far as pattern. Uh, the scales on a Leatherback obviously are almost non-existent, so you can't really get a lot of resistance going upwards or downwards like you do with the normal scale. So what you get is what you see. Uh, there's not a lot of scales there. It's a lot less spiky than a regular Dunner because it's a Leatherback, but you can see the pattern from that Dunner Morph coming all of the rounded edges here. That is what I'm talking about when I'm, ta when I'm saying that there is a rounded pattern. So I'm going to show you a little bit with the zoom. So you can kind of see the rounded pattern all through there versus the next dragon I'm going to show you is one that has regular pattern. Um, so the first dragon I showed you, Sarah, she was a normal scale, but she didn't have a lot of the blue barring versus uh, the dragon I'm going to show you next is going to have the blue barring. So you can see what it looks like with one with blue barring and one with no with Dunner that has a little bit of blue barring. I don't have any Dunners to have a lot of blue barring, to be honest. Um, so it's good. actually, I do. I do have one that has a lot of blue barring. I'll show you that one as well. So just to show you how the pattern differs from one high blue bar uh, dragon to a Dunner blue bar dragon. Uh, so you can see what the Dunner morph does to a tiger or a blue bar bearded dragon. So this is Zinnia. Zinnia is a yellow tiger or a citrus tiger or a yellow blue bar or a citrus blue bar. It depends on who you ask. A lot of people call them different things. Tiger is the term that they were originally called, but then people started calling them blue bar. So citrus tiger, yellow tiger is what we have here. Um, it's hard to capture her colors. She is actually very vibrant yellow and you can kind of see it in the camera, but because she's so vibrant, it reflects all of the light. So it's hard to see how colorful she actually is. But this is what I was telling you about with a normal scale that has blue barring. You'll have all of these tiger stripes going towards the sides there. And now I'm going to show you a bearded dragon that has Dunner blue barring or is a Dunner tiger. So you can see how that defers to a Dunner morph versus a regular scale uh, tiger that you're seeing right here. So this dragon here is a kill. A kill is a hypo leatherback Dunner. Um, as you can see, he does have the tiger barring or the blue barring, and you can see the difference between a tiger stripe on a normal scale and a tiger stripe on a dunner. You still get these rounded patterns from the dunner pattern, and then because of the tiger being high in blue barring, you get this nice dark or nice light blues, depending on your morph, uh, of blue going down the sides here. Super cool looking. I definitely like the tiger dunner look. Um, I think it's a very cool underrated look. Not a lot of people actually work with this. A lot of people like to work with just the regular tiger stripes, which is fine. No big deal. But with the Dunners, you can get this oh, extreme blue sides like you see here. And I've seen some with even better blue sides uh, that are Dunner morphs. And it's just impossible to explain. I think it looks very good. And the last dragon I want to show you. Just to show you one last thing is another baby that is also a hypotrans leather dunner. So you can see some more blue barring, but this one doesn't have obviously the same levels of blue barring as this one. Just to show you how the pattern is very rounded because this baby that I'm about to show you actually has a very rounded pattern compared to the other dragons that I've shown you today that have dunner pattern, just not as visible as this dragon that I'm about to show you. And here we are. This is the last bearded dragon I want to show you for this video. This bearded dragon here, like I said, is a hypo, hypo leather dunner. Um, he is also translucent, but you can see how his pattern differs from all the other dragons I showed you because his dunner pattern is very noticeable. You can see all of this rounded look. It's so rounded. That you can see the pattern within the pattern because of how his dunner pattern 
plays around his color so that you have all of these nice little orange tones inside of the black lines, which is super cool, super neat. And that is why I held this guy back. Same with Akil. Uh, I held them back because they look pretty cool. And I also like their genetics. So this guy here is Lucifer. Lucifer obviously is living up to his name with how vibrant he is and how cool he looks. He's actually not very mean considering I named him after the devil, but it's all right. Um, I, I'm glad he's not mean. I hate having the mean dragons that I have to tame. Um, so last dragon that I showed you, one of the best looking dragons that I produced this year. I'm pretty stoked about this guy and I can't wait to see him grow up. If you have any questions about the Dunner more, if you can always reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook and I'll answer any questions that you may have. The one thing I want to talk about with the Dunner Morph, and this is probably something that most people don't want to talk about. The Dunner Morph, there is a complication that comes with the Dunner Morph. And sometimes, not every time, I would say probably like one in eight, you'll have a bearded dragon that likes to store food in its throat before it actually digest it and swallows it. Um, and the problem with that is that sometimes if it's water, they can store it in their throat and they can drown if they inhale while they're also drinking the water. And then if it's food, if they hold it for an extended period of time, you also get the chance of their food going bad in their throat, which can lead to death. And we don't want that to happen, obviously. I don't have any dragons that do that, so I can't really show you what that looks like. I just know that once you feed them, initially they always hold the food in their throat, unlike a regular bearded dragon where it'll die, it'll start swallowing as soon as it starts eating. Um, you will see food in a regular bearded dragon's throat, but not for as long as you see it in a dunner. I would say usually with a normal bearded dragon, it lasts about a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds or so before it's completely digested. With a dunner, it could be minutes. I have seen some bearded dragons hold it for hours on end, and that is why it's a problem with the Dunner Morph. And it all came from the way things work with the Dunner Morph. A lot of Dunners used to be inbred just because people were trying to figure out if it was a recessive morph or if it was a uh, co-dominant or incomplete dominant morph. And obviously we found out that it was the dominant morph uh, because there is not a super version of the Dunner. Um, so breeding a Dunner to a Dunner, you're only going to get about 75% Dunners and 25% normal scale. Um, and because of that, there's going to be a high chance that a lot of those Dunners are going to have that complication where they store food in their throat, which is not good. It's not ideal. So if you are breeding for Dunners or if you're looking to buy a Dunner, just make sure that you are aware of their genetics and aware of the lineage of the Dunners that you're using so you can figure out if they're going to have that situation or that issue where they store food in their throats. For an extended period of time and um, that is really the only complication with the Dunner Morph and that's all I have for today's video. So if you made it this far into the video don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always peace.